Hi, and welcome to the Long Range Shooting and Custom Rifle Building Podcast presented by Wolf Precision Incorporated, where we learn about and share long range shooting and custom rifle building. I am your host, Jamie Dotson, and welcome to the show. Hi, and welcome to episode 182 of Wolf Precision's Long Range Shooting and Custom Rifle Building Podcast. I'm host, Jamie Dotson, and welcome back to the show. In this episode, we are going to give away a chassis to a lucky winner as a Happy New Year's gift and as a special gift that XLR gave to us to give away as to one of our listeners. And we will announce that winner here at the end of the podcast, so stick around. We also want to talk about something that's been on my mind for a while. Is it the cartridge? Is it the caliber? Or is it the shooter? Let's talk about why going small makes such a big difference in making you a much, much better shooter overall. So that would be a great podcast. This is very, very personal to me with lots of experience in getting shooters up and running, getting them to shoot their best, getting the best out of them and their equipment. And we've had a lot of phenomena coming in over the last couple of months of all of these pictures of all of these calibers coming in with these incredible groups, stuff you wouldn't even think is possible. And it just lends credence to all of the experience that we've had with over you know, 15, 17 years of the shooting school as well as all the years prior to that in competition and teaching. And so I want to share with you as we go into the new year a lot of food for thought when it comes to selecting that caliber and really what just plays itself out in the facts. It's the numbers, it's the evidence and where it points. So I want to share with you my thoughts, my feelings and the facts that we found and giving some honest advice to get the most out of your shooting, your fundamentals and getting off to the races for 2024. All right, before we get started, I want to say thank you to Trigger Tech. They are makers of fine rifle triggers. They are one of our favorites to recommend all of our customers here and what we recommend to put in all of our kit rifles. You can stop over to TriggerTech.com, look at all their fine selections, but we choose them because they're safe, they're easy to install, and easy to adjust. So they offer them for lots of different makes and models of rifles. It's not just the rifles that we build here, and it really is a nice upgrade. So if you want to shoot better, if you want to upgrade your trigger to get the most out of your rifle, you can stop over to TriggerTech.com. That's TriggerTech.com, and look at their fine selection today. We'd also like to thank MDT. They're makers of fine rifle chassis. They make everything from the new ACC Elite, the Jay Allen, the Oryx. There's so many different chassis that they're offering on the market that really fit a lot of different niches. You know, whether it's a medium weight varmint rifle, heavyweight tactical rifle, or lightweight hunting rifle, they offer a lot of chassis. And I always say if you're going to shoot at distance or if you want to get the most out of your shooting abilities, the stock has to fit you well. And if you're going to shoot beyond 700 yards a lot, it has to fit you perfectly. And one of the upgrades you can do to a factory rifle is get a stock that fits you properly. So you can look at all the fine selection at mdttac.com. That's mdttac.com. So as we get ready to launch into 2024 and the new shooting season, we have been getting a ton of emails. We're going to post some pictures up on Facebook of some of the groups that are being you know, submitted to us with rifles that were just delivered. So we're really happy that the customers are getting incredible shooting rifles. And, you know, the emails we get are completely ecstatic, like, oh, my God, I've never shot a rifle like this before. And part of it, there's three or four prongs to this. And I want to go over not just the rifle part of it. This isn't me trying to sell you rifle. But more importantly is talking about caliber and caliber selection and some of the phenomena that's happening with the 22 Creed more. So we just received an email yesterday from another customer who just received this 22 Creed more. Uh, they both have 22 Creeds, and he literally shot a group that was less than 0.1 inch. We have another gentleman that got his new rifle out and shot a group in the twos and threes. I mean, the phenomena with the 22 Creed of, A, it's ease to reload. It's very accurate as far as a cartridge goes. I think it's an incredible hunting cartridge as well as a match cartridge, right? There's lots you can do with a fast bullet and especially when you have the option to do solids. So you think of like a 60 or 70 or 75 grain solid moving at speed. You know, it used to be back in the day, mule deer were shot all the time with 243s. Uh, you can go back and read a lot of old articles that that was actually a really good mule deer cartridge. And most of them shot 85 grain bullets. That was a common thing for mule deer. 
So if you take a 85 or 90 grain bullet or a 70 or 75 grain solid that's just as big and you now have it moving at these higher velocities, how is it not just as good at taking medium-sized game or even big game at reasonable distances? Now, I'm not talking and saying, hey, we got to go out and shoot elk at 1,000 yards with 22 Creedmoor. Unless I was starving to death, there's no way I would do that. I would always sneak closer. But what I am saying, though, you give me a 12 or 13-year-old kid and you give them a rifle, and I love kids for this reason, is they're open and honest with their reactions to recoil, right? You give them a rifle that doesn't beat the daylights out of them, and I'll show you a kid that's going to learn to shoot great, right? He's not going to be afraid. He's not going to be intimidated. The rifle's not bouncing all over the place. It's enjoyable. Adults are the same, except for we just are in denial, right? We will man up and take the punishment without saying anything about it, thinking that we're going to overcome it with just persistence and attitude, and that's not true at all. So I want to talk a little bit about the phenomena and just is it the caliber? Well, yeah. Is it part of the rifle? Well, we hope so. You know, we're pretty proud of the ACE system and we think we built a good rifle. But more importantly, it's the combination of a low recoiling caliber allowing the shooter to shoot to their fullest abilities. And I think this holds true to so many different reasons. And maybe why the 20s you create has just turned into that really lucky round that just allows people to get that high-performance cartridge without the high-performance beating that uh, sometimes is even associated with it. So you take a 6.5 Creedmoor in a hunting rifle, very lightweight, 6 pounds, 7 pounds. We've built them. They are hoppy, and they'll surprise you on how much recoil they have. They're not like a 308 or a 30 6 but to newer shooters, younger shooters, female shooters, to people that are recoil-sensitive and just don't say it, um, that's unnerving, and it's really hard to rinse and repeat to get that rifle back in the same spot every single time to hit the same spot over and over again. So you think about just how much harder it is to drive, how much more of a skilled shooter you have to be. You think about PRS and the going fad of having 21 and 26-pound crazy heavy rifles with super low recoiling, you know, like 6BR, 6-dasher. The reason they're built this way and the reason they're shooting so well is because they're removing the recoil. They're getting a higher level of repeatability with how the rifle's behaving, and they can control the rifle better. And so all of a sudden, man, they're just world-class shooters. But if you take them and you put them on a 300 wind mag that weighs 7 pounds and sliding and bouncing all over the place, their ability to shoot will suffer. I'm not saying that they can't shoot, and they'll probably shoot pretty well, if not in some cases really good, but they will not be able to perform at the level that they did with the other rifle that's much heavier and a much smaller caliber. It is just almost impossible because you have to get the rifle back in line with the target the same exact way. You have to get on the rifle the same exact way. Everything has to be exactly the same. And when you take a 300 wind mag that launches up in the air and lands facing two or three feet right of the target every time you pull the trigger, now you've got the rifle. You have to move back into position. You have to get your tripod, bipod, rear bag, whatever you're shooting off of all lined up. Now you got to get your face back on the gun the exact same place, the exact same pressure, the exact same location, hand hold, trigger, squeeze. All of that has to be exactly the same. And with the rifle violently hitting you and getting in your head a little bit, as well as it pointing in another direction every time you pull the trigger, you know, it's just you have to reline up on the runway every single time. It's like every time you reline up, all of a sudden something knocks you off course again. You got to reline up, something knocks you off course again. You got to reline up, something knocks you off course again. So I want to share with you my personal feelings and what we've learned. It's just a fact. It's not even an argument in my mind anymore. Over the years, what I've learned with recoil and people's ability to shoot and why I'm going to make the case here to say lower recoiling rifles will allow you to shoot better, not because you can't shoot good, it's just more repeatable and more comfortable and it removes the recoil element that some shooters are very much affected by. So for example here, through the early years of the shooting school, let's just go back 15, 17 years, it was not uncommon for someone to want to bring a three thirty eight to the shooting school. Our Top Gun hat has never, ever been won by a 338. Our Top Gun hat has never been won by a 300 Wind Mag. Our Top Gun hat and many classes have been won with 223s out to 1,000 yards. It sounds crazy, right? But what we've learned in especially the first several years of the shooting school, so people would bring these rifles. You know, we didn't have school rifles back then, but I had my trainer in 223. And so I learned really quickly, and I learned this with kids as well, is that people would bring rifles that are too light, too much recoil, 
There's too much going on for them fundamentally to be able to control it. It's like a high-maintenance, high-speed airplane that requires a much better pilot than something that flies at a moderate speed and is much easier to control, right? And so what we've learned with kids is remove the recoil and reduce and remove the noise. And it's just like taking candy from a baby. They'll sit there at 100 yards and shoot all day long. I could take any 8- and 10-year-old and get them out to 700 yards with ease. And they'll hit it over and over and over again. They're not afraid, right? And so what we've learned here at the shooting school is a lot of time, especially the early years, customers would bring rifles that would break down. Happened all the time, whether it's a scope failing, whether it's the rifle just not holding or all over the place, poor equipment, bad bipod. I mean, I can just list you a laundry list of things that were rifles are just, they were not performing well. And it's just a combination of a lot of different things that could be going wrong. And what I would do is I would let them use my 223. And my 223 was a fast twist shooting 75 grain bullets. And you would have been stunned and you would think it's a totally different person sitting there because all of a sudden within a couple hours, they are completely alive on the gun. They are absolutely one with it. They're drilling groups they've never shot so good before. They're hitting targets at distance they never thought possible. And, you know, people argue the wind and they say, well, you know, you got to beat the wind in the submission. And that's not true at all. The wind is math. You can't beat math by just willpower. You have to do the math. And it doesn't matter which caliber you're shooting. Is there technically a small advantage? Yeah, there is. And it's not as big as you think. If you don't do the work, regardless of the caliber, you're still going to have air in your shot. And so what we've learned is they would be running targets out to 1,000 yards, and they'd be like, oh, my God, I wouldn't even think you could shoot a 223 to 1,000 yards. And they're hitting them. And I think, it, A, it gives them a huge boost of confidence. But, B, they're not afraid of the gun. The rifle's not recoiling. And they're smiling. They're enjoying themselves. They're coming off the line giggling, right? They're, that's what shooting's about. And so when I'm getting all of these pictures of all of these groups coming back in, and a lot of them are 22 Creedmoors. This isn't a sales pitch for 22 Creed. It's just it's the new kid on the block and 22 cow that shoots a heavier bullet that's more suited for long range, right? And the groups are coming in amazing. And in my mind, you know, yes, we believe a good part of it's the rifle for sure. You know, we really take the time to really try to build a super high quality rifle. That's what we do. But they have to shoot it, right? They have to be a great shooter. And in my mind, I think the other half of the equation to why these groups are coming in like this is because they're shooting calibers that are just flat out fun to shoot and flat out does not beat the daylights out of them and flat out repeatable when it comes to just setting there and putting the rounds over and over and over again with the rifle barely even moving. That allows them to become a better shooter because they're not fighting the airplane and turbulence, right? They're a nice, clean, smooth air. All they have to do is keep rinsing and repeating what they're doing, and they're going to have a great time and hit the same spot over and over again. Where the Magnums, they're like a small airplane flying through massive turbulence, being tossed around all over the place and constantly have to recorrect. A, it just wears you out. And B, and some people, it scares them. You know, I've watched... People come through the school here and halfway through the school stop shooting because they brought calibers that people insisted that they go on their elk hunt with. They spent no time with it before they got here. And halfway through the class, they're done. They're like, I, I can't shoot this no more. And we'll get them on a rifle that has moderate to low recoil and the fun comes back and they're going to be a better shooter. So when you're selecting calibers for coming 2024, I would say, you know, for me, put the fun back into shooting. Leave all the ego, all the massive booming louder calibers. Now I get it. Some people love the 7PRC or 300 Win Mag. I'm a big 300 Win Mag fan. I, I really like that caliber a lot, but I wouldn't choose it for my match gun at all. And I certainly wouldn't go to the range shooting 200 rounds to it every single day. That is a working gun. That's not a training gun. And, and in some cases, in light rifles cannot be a very fun gun to shoot either. Right. And so I, I really recommend it. I think if you want to become a better shooter, you've got to get into a rifle that allows you to fly in smoother air, right? That doesn't require a better pilot. It just requires you to rinse and repeat the same thing you're doing. And you're going to have success, which is what we're trying to do. I think one of the reasons why people love the 22 Creed so much is the fact that they have so much success with it so fast. And, you know, they shoot it here at the school and they come off the gun. They're like a grin from ear to ear, like, what was that? You know, and how much fun it is to shoot them, how it is to self-spot and recorrect and come back on target quickly doing a second and third and fourth follow-up shot, you know, watching your own impacts and being able to self-correct, just not getting the daylight speed out of you. And I really do believe that statistically speaking over the last, let's just say 17 years of the school, in every case when we brought somebody off of a heavier recoiling rifle or a hunting rifle in a bigger caliber, 
and we gave them a lower recoil rifle. And in the first 10 years, that was 223s. They always performed two to three times better. And now with the 22 Creed, it's the same thing. Like the school guns usually just everybody enjoys them. They don't beat you up. You have fun, right? And so whether it's a young shooter, whether it's a female shooter that's new and, and you know, they just don't want to play the six-inch punch game. It's not their cup of tea, right? There's no testosterone in this for them. They want no bragging rights. They just want a, a rifle that they can shoot and have fun with, right? And so when I look at these groups, it just reminds me of what we have known for over the last 20 years is the fact that most shooters will actually – compound their abilities by getting a rifle with lower recoil. They were able to put the shot where it's supposed to go almost two to three times more consistently. Like the old saying is, you know, when you're shooting these big calibers and you get into arguments with people talking about heavy recoiling rifles is they're like, well, it's, you know, half the, half the people on one soapbox and the other sideline saying, well, look, you got to have this big caliber. You know, you want to knock it down. You want to put a big hole in it so it bleeds every. Okay, and on the other soapbox, on the other side of the line, you've got people just screaming, caliber doesn't matter, it's shot placement, and blah, blah, blah. And, okay, and but I think there's a third box in this, and it's the shooter's ability to put the shot where it's supposed to go, right? You can talk about shot placement all you want, but if you're nervous behind the gun, and now you've got all this stress of an animal in front of you at distance, um, yeah, you're compounding the problem, and you're probably not going to practice as much, right? But you put someone behind a gun that they're comfortable shooting, that they're having fun shooting, that... They'll shoot more, they'll shoot more often, they'll shoot more accurately, and their shot placement will easily double in their ability to keep that shot in where it's supposed to go. So you take a kid that has, a, for example, like a, a lower recoil caliber, like a two twenty three, and they'll sit there and shoot golf balls at 200 yards all day long. Those are kill shots every single time. You give them a 300 wind mag and ask them to do the same thing, and you can all imagine in your head what that would look like. Hang golf balls at 200 yards, hand them a 300 wind mag, and say, there we go, have at it. And just watch what happens. You know, you're going to have lots of divots all around the golf ball for sure. But you hand them a little 223 and say, here we go, a heavier gun, suppressed, extremely accurate. He's probably going to chase those golf balls all over the place, knocking them around. And that's what that's what happens. And so – I'm going to post up some pictures on Facebook. The groups that we got is incredible. We had one group come in that was 0. 0.06 inches. And I said to my wife, she is our CFO. I'm like, hey, I don't know if I can shoot that. <laughs> you know, like I think I'm a pretty good shooter. I'm okay, right? But I've never shot a sub 0. 0.1 inch group off a bipod before. I mean, it's just, I've never done that. I mean, I've shot nice groups before but for me i'm looking at that like oh my god you know that's an incredible group and you know customer i'll put some posts up on facebook so you can see some of these groups and but i really do think you know the customers are really excited sending them pictures and they're super excited to share the groups and i think part of their ability not downplaying their ability to shoot but part of the reason why they're experiencing such a higher success rate and a such faster success rate and groups that they've never shot before, shooting like they've never shot before, I really do think a lot of that is a lower recoiling rifle, like the 22 Creed or something like that. I always, in my heart, believe that most shooters will shoot better if they have more fun or getting beat up less on the firing line. And most will be able to put the shots better. Most will have more repeatability. Think about how little the pilot has to handle the joystick how much little input he has to put into the airplane. If, if he's flying in smooth, clean air, right, he just has to give small adjustments and the airplane will just keep flying right along, right? He's not grabbing hold of that stick and yanking all over the place. You take that same pilot and you put him in rough turbulent air and just think about how much he's going to be fighting trying to keep that plane on point. Everything's bouncing the plane all over the place and he's constantly recorrecting. And that's the same thing that happens with recoil. And so it's no wonder that they're shooting better. It it's really isn't. It's a... It's a compounding interest thing. Your return on your investment is doubling and tripling in its enjoyment back to you because not just the quality of the rifle that you've chosen and the components and the caliber, but now your ability to shoot it better because you've picked a caliber that is easier to fly in good, smooth air, right? No fighting it, no massive self-corrections, no startling the daylights out of you. You just got to baby it along and it'll just keep doing what it does all day long. So I'm going to challenge you to take some smaller calibers out this year and shoot shoot 223s out to 800 yards and just see how much fun it is. 
get something that just is fun to shoot and go out and spend some time with it. And I think a lot of guys, it reignites not just their passion for shooting. Um, they'll shoot more. They'll get to share it with other people. Um, but I also feel that it just reminds you that it, the horsepower isn't always required. And I think the expense of shooting some of the bigger calibers plays, you know, heck with it. If, if you got to go to the, and buy, you know, $50, $60, $70 dollars for one box of ammunition, you're not going to go and shoot four or five boxes with your friends on a Saturday afternoon. You're going to shoot 10 or five rounds through it and you're going to put the rifle away, right? You're going to be a miser with your ammo just because it's so expensive to shoot. So that's the other thing is the smaller calibers, usually the ammunition is a lot cheaper. Usually the reloading it is way cheaper because the components are so much less expensive. There's less powder. You'll just shoot more. And I think, again, it's compounding interest. It's another reason why you're just going to get that much more success out of it. You're getting that much return on your investment for all of those reasons. So I would like to announce our winner. Before I do that, I want to say thank you to Krieger Barrels. Krieger is the maker of fine cut rifle barrels. They are a great family-owned business from the great state of Wisconsin. They offer a program called Krieger Direct where you can order your barrel and have it in as little as two to three business days, which if you don't know back in the day, I mean, I've waited 18 months for barrels when we were building many years ago when we had the big crunches and I remember a couple of years ago, we had 12-month lead times on our barrels, trying to keep barrels in inventory. So the fact that you can buy a barrel and have it in two to three business days, that is incredible. So we want to recommend that you stop over and see Krieger Barrels. They have that new program. You can have your barrel in as little as two to three business days. It's called Krieger Direct. So you can learn more at KriegerBarrels.com. That's KriegerBarrels.com today. So we want to announce our winner of our chassis. Can we get an applause, please? We want to thank Joe Novak of Butler, Pennsylvania. Joe, you are the winner of a brand new XR Element chassis. She's in aluminum. Uh, she is red with a TR2 buttstock and black. She is a Remington 700 short action chassis, and she is yours. Congratulations. We will be sending out a newsletter, and we'll be sending you out an email to contact us to see how you would like us to ship out your new prize. So congratulations, Joe on a winning of a great new chassis. All right, I don't want to make this podcast too long. It is New Year's, and we hope everybody had a great and wonderful Christmas. We hope you have a happy and safe New Year's and get a chance to sit back, reflect where you're at in 2023 and where you want to be in 2024. Um, just a couple quick updates. We have our shooting school starting to fill up. So if you'd like to join us, we'd love to have you in our in-person classes. Our online shooting school is also up and running full force. We have our new level one and two kits up and running. So a level one kit is components based that you would assemble there. Level two kit is a completed rifle without the trigger, saving you on average of about $1,100 or $900 to $1,100 on a rifle. We also offer our custom rifle delivery day where you can come in and spend the day with us doing your final assembly on your rifle, as well as going to the range and chronographing it and fitting it and getting dope for it and running steel out. It's a great way to pick up your rifle, learn a lot about it, get it fitted properly and spend time with people that build it to teach you all about it from everything from the maintenance to cleaning to actually working with true dope for your rifle. So we offer that. You can come in and actually do a build assist with us. Um, those are active online as well. Don't forget we have an off-site long-range shooting school coming in Florida. So in March, our very first shooting school of the year will be held in southern Florida. You can learn more about that at wolfprecision.net. And then we also have a moving target school that we're teaching in Swainsboro the week afterwards. So we're going to be in Florida the third week of March, and then we're going to head back to Georgia and teach a movers class there on our way back to our shop here in Pennsylvania. So it's a great opportunity to attend a great long-range shooting school. I think there's one slot left for Florida, and if you've never shot movers before, it is one of my favorite things to do as well as one of my favorite things to teach. It is as much fun as you can possibly have with your rifle. And it now makes your world in motion. So for all of you hunters out there, how many times have you been looking at an animal walking and you're following it and following it. And in your mind, you're saying, please stop, please stop, please stop, please stop, please stop. After this class, you will no longer ask that question. Learning to engage and shoot moving targets is one of the coolest things to learn to do with your rifle. And it changes your shooting forever. It is one of my favorite things to teach. One of my favorite things to shoot in a match as well. So if you'd like to join us. There are some prerequisites for this class. There's some things you can learn about it on our website, and we have a couple slots left. That'll be taught in March as well. 
Last but not least, we have two reloading classes that we did announce. We are eventually going to take the reloading class to an online format so we can actually share it. But there is some hands-on things that are that have value to it. We have two reloading classes that we announced for late winter, early spring. Don't miss out. There's only six students per class. These will be the last two that we're going to hold. The rest of the classes will all be online. So if you want to come and attend an in-person class with us here one-on-one, and we actually load the 22 Creedmoor in class, this will be your last opportunity. We're going to have two classes, six slots each. You can learn more about that at wolfprecision.net as well. We'd love to have you. All right, so thank you, everybody, for taking the time to join us here on the podcast. Really appreciate it. Our goal is for 2024 is to actually bring on and do some more guests. We want to talk to some people in the industry. We've been very blessed that we know all of these people and got to meet all these different industries. But, of course, we're a business, and we're growing, and we have our own projects we're working on, and we just don't get a chance to invite them on and talk with them because there's a lot of really cool stuff behind the scenes that happens in our industry all the time. There's really inventive people, and there's people that are in different aspects of it all over the place that are just fascinating to talk to. So my goal for 2024, if we can, is to have about every other podcast with a guest speaker of some kind, some industry, uh, some form or or backdrop that works something in our industry, in the sport that we love, whether it's guiding coyotes or calling coyotes for guys or, you know, big game hunting, different things that you can do there, as well as people in our industry that actually manufacture. And you get a chance to hear their story, their background, and of course, what led them into the business that they're in and, and where they're at. And sometimes the struggles and the stories behind the scenes that we don't all get to hear that led them and got them to where they're at today. So I think that would be a lot of fun as well. I enjoy those type of things. I love hearing people's story. And I really love the opportunity for people to share it because I I think it just changes how you view our industry and the people in it and the things and obstacles that they've had to overcome to experience any level of success today. So I think that would be fascinating as well. So thank you everybody for taking the time to join us here on the podcast. We certainly appreciate it. If you enjoy this podcast, we really encourage you to leave a nice comment. It helps us a lot. If you enjoy the content, you would like to share it. Of course, sharing it helps us a lot with our ratings as well. And then, of course, if you would like to support this show, you can join the Wolf Pack on Patreon. Just look for Wolf Precision Inc. And it's $3 a month, and you can support the show there. We certainly appreciate all those who have done that as well. So thank you, everybody. I hope everybody had a happy, happy new year and wish everybody all the best for 2024. Hopefully a great shooting season, great shooting year, and get a chance to go out there and enjoy the sport that we all love. Thanks for joining us. My name is Jamie Dotson. I'm your host, and you're listening to Wolf Precision's Long Range Shooting and Custom Rifle Building Podcast. <laughs>